Hello everybody, Alex back again, doing uh, my favorite movies of the month. That's it for August. Bye bye August, it's been fun. Now let's welcome ourselves to September, where fall is going to begin. Fall movies are coming out. It's kind of a tail end of the summer season, and a lot has come out in this month. Stuff that really surprised me, some classics actually came out in this month. I already said it on my Ramble on the Bridge, but I want to do another shout out to the one and only Black Panther himself, T'Challa, Chadwick Boseman, rest in peace. Gone too soon. We just, you know, you're just starting to break out and become this icon and you're playing such a memorable character and gone too soon. It's so sad. Um, rest in peace. You will be missed. All right, let's move on to some of my favorite movies from September. September's past. Since we still can't go to the movies, really, I know they're going to release... They're going to try and release Tenet this month. We'll see how that goes. Maybe. Um, I don't know. I know Driving Near Me is actually playing New Mutants, so that's hopeful that they're showing a new movie. They've only been showing older movies. But this is about older movies. Okay. September. Um, hmm. I was really surprised to see that one of the most beloved, most uh, memorable, and one of the greatest movies ever, Shawshank Redemption, came out in September. I had no idea. I thought it was maybe October. You know, it's October, November, December. That's when they make the contenders for uh, the Oscars. But no, this came out in September. And of course, it was a flop. Yeah. Shawshank Redemption. What the hell is that? Who's going to want to see that? But here's the magic of life after theaters and life on home video. When you could rent movies at Blockbuster and places like that. That's when it took a second life. And I remember, I think someone saw it and said, you got to see it. And we rented the movie and I'm so glad we did. It is a masterpiece. Frank Darabont directed it, Morgan Freeman, Tim Robbins, an incredible movie that still blows me away that how they think of all this stuff and tie everything together. Oh my God, Frank Darabont was a genius with this movie. And now it's number one on the IMDb Top 200. So I guess they did something right. Another one on the IMDb Top 200. I don't know what number it is, but... Good fellas. How am I funny? Am I here to make you laugh? Am I here to amuse me? Amuse you? Can't even speak. Bad imitation. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. I may have botched that up. But anyway, this is the movie. I never got to see it in theaters. I had to wait till it went to cable. But this came out in September of 1990. 30 years ago. Damn. But it definitely... Classic, violent, but it's just gripping and funny at times and engaging and I think the best mob movie ever. I know Godfather people will decry it, but I like this one more. And this was a surprise to me. Uh, the IMDb rating goes from 1 to 10 as the best. Yes, these two are tens. And you'll be surprised to see that this one is. Ed Wood. I freaking love this movie. This was Tim Burton's biopic of the infamous director Edward D. Wood Jr. In this movie, played brilliantly by Johnny Depp. At this time, I'd only seen him do one movie with Tim Burton, which was another Ed, Edward Scissorhands. And like, well, that's pretty interesting. He's this character, and then he played this. Like, this guy can act. And then, of course, he's surrounded by <laughs> this cast of characters. Bill Murray, Sarah Jessica Parker, uh, George the Animal Steel, and, of course, Academy Award winner, Martin Landau playing Bela Lagosi. Karloff does not deserve to smell my sheet. Uh, quotable, I saw this on home video too for the first time and loved it. And I can't get enough of it. I, I never get sick of watching this movie. 
there's just something about it. It is. He knows he made crappy movies. He, he really didn't know he made crappy movies. He thought he was great, but he loved making them, and there, that was the passion that showed through this film. A uh, classic, in my opinion. And uh, I'll go with this one. This one, Best Oscar. 1999, American Beauty. And I connected with uh, Kevin Spacey's character. I wasn't his age, but I was getting close, and not really. <laughs> He was in his 40s or something like that. But I felt that the, you know, he kind of just doing running the rat race, not going anywhere, not doing anything. I can, I could relate to Lester Burnham at the time, uh, but I wouldn't go to the extremes he did. That's why it's a movie and a really great one. I still enjoy it and it deserved its Oscar. A movie that wasn't nominated for an Oscar but a classic that came out through the years, The Princess Bride. A very big quotable movie. You know all the lines. My name is Inigo Montoya. You kill my father, prepare to die. You are the brute squad. But anyway, there's so many more quotable lines. Inconceivable, of course, yeah. I could go on and on. And this was one of those movies that you see, in, I think I saw it on cable. I'm like, oh, this is different. <laughs> a little witty and funny and... Not your usual fairy tale thing. I think it was something ahead of its time, and people didn't really appreciate it. But as time went on, it's become such an enjoyable film. Ah. Now we go on to a surprise from 1993 by the one and only Richard Linkletter. I had to get the Criterion collection of Dazed and Confused when it came out. I did get to see this in the theater, and it was all right, all right, all right. I mean, this launched career as Ben Affleck, um, Parker Posey, and of course, Matthew McConaughey. I mean, come on. Such a fun film. And <laughs> you'll be dazed and confused if you don't watch it. <laughs> so quotable. Now, Quentin Tarantino had another movie come out in 1994, which you may, or may obviously know. This also came out in the same year. He only wrote the movie. He didn't direct this one, but still an awesome flick, True Romance. Good cast of characters. Christian Slater, Patricia Arquette, Dennis Hopper, Christopher Walken. Um, Gary Oldman's in it. Even Val Kilmer plays Elvis offscreen. Bronson Pinchot. Just an incredible cast and a really good story. And yeah, James Gandolfini was in it, like one of his early roles. He plays the guy trying to kill uh, Alabama, played by Patricia. Such a good flick, directed by the late Tony Scott. And you, you hear Quentin's voice in here, but you'll hear it in another movie, but that didn't come out this month. We'll get to that another time. Another good one, Sneakers. Yeah, Robert Redford in the gang here. Cindy Poitier, Dan Aykroyd, David Strathairn, and the late River Phoenix. All combined forces to do this really witty and funny and uh, engaging, and even suspenseful movie. Well, this one raised a lot of eyebrows at the time. Blue Velvet by one and only David Lynch. A very dark movie. Dennis Hopper was in this too. Uh, wow, he played a really scary character named Frank Booth. Seeing what's going on in the shadows in suburbia in America. But highly recommended this is a great act, a well acted movie, great, great direction. Bizarre, but worth checking out. Hmm. Yes, I like a good rom com. <laughs> Just like Evan. This is when Mark Ruffalo was doing a lot of these. And he'd combine forces with uh, the Oscar winner herself, Reese Witherspoon. I think she just came off of winning her Oscar in. Um, no, 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 no. Uh, 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 uh. Walk the line. Jeez. I forget that. I lose my uh, movie watching uh, license. But this was enjoyable. And they made a good combo. This is one you may not know. And God spoke. In the vein of This is Spinal Tap, this was a mockumentary about making a movie about the Bible. And these guys trying to raise the funds and making this crazy silly flick. They have Soupy Sales playing 
um, Moses. Um, I have Eve Plum playing Noah's wife. Andy Dick was in it, playing, uh, I think, Cain, Cain or Abel. Lou Ferrigno was playing the other one. <laughs> Just shows you how funny it was. Even Chris Kattane had an unknown role then as someone who watched the movie and hated it. But if you really want a funny mockumentary movie, this is definitely worth checking out. And just another one we own. This came out last year. The last time we get to have Rambo, Last Blood. It's a good send-off for the man. Did his thing one more time. Took revenge, Rambo style. Those are the ones I own. But hey, there's a lot more. Let's go down the list for some of them. Psycho. I've been researching and going back because I've seen those classic movies that I just completely forgot were out there and I'm looking at the release dates and sure enough, Psycho came out in September. My favorite Hitchcock movie. Gets me chills every time that shower scene. And the scene when the detective's walking up the stairs. Mm -hmm. And at the end, when you uh, see who Mother really is. Suspenseful, just incredibly well directed. And this is Hitchcock at his best. All right, what else do we have from that month? Almost famous. Great film. It was Cameron Crowe's Ode to Himself as a young writer and on the music scene and almost like a biographical film. Such a great cast and awesome music. What else? L.A. Confidential. I don't know that, but... Another great move from 1997 that was up for an Oscar and won for Adapted Screenplay and Best Supporting Actress for Kim Basinger. Top Time Cop. I like that one with Jean-Claude Van Damme. All of Me, which I just watched again recently with my wife. The great uh, Steve Martin and Lily Tomlin combining forces. Or her spirit is stuck on the right side of his body and you can only see her in a mirror. Great comedy stuff. Ronan has one of the best car chases ever. Fatal Attraction. <laughs> that raised a few eyebrows when it came out back in the day. And an Australian guy. Yeah, a Crocodile Dundee came out. 1986 in September. A big hit. Who knew? It just caught on and everybody had to go see it. And quote that line. Well, that's not a knife. That's a knife. Maybe you should have some Foster's Lager. It's Australian for bear. Well, this was fun that month. Seven. There are seven deadly sins. That was a really dark movie. I went to see that in a drive-in. <laughs> of all the movies to see at a drive-in, I had to see seven. It was kind of a dark movie to see. Anyway, now in and out came out. Has Kevin Klein, Matt Dillon, Joan Cusack, and me. I'm, you can't see me, but I was an extra in that movie. So if you ever watch it, I was in the scene where Matt Dillon's character wins an Oscar, but you don't see me. But I was there, I swear. It's pretty wild to see everybody there, and Glenn Close was the one giving away the Oscar. So wild to be in her presence for a little while. Rush Hour. Yeah, that's when the first Rush Hour came out in 1998. <sighs> 22 years ago. Wow. What a fun comedy duel of Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker. What else? Underworld began. Probably in time for Halloween. This is uh, the beginning of the Underworld Saga. Shaun of the Dead came out. What was it? I surprised. Across the Universe. Uh, great movie. Musical to the Beatles music. Can't go wrong there. Easy A. Was pretty damn funny. And enjoyable. Emma Stone showed her acting chops. Hotel Transylvania came out. Wow. Pitch Perfect. The Family, which we just saw recently. With Robert De Niro and Michelle Pfeiffer. Like a mob family that has to go into protective custody. And they're, I think, in France or someplace like that. Germany? I think it was Germany. And they have to hide from the mob. It was good. It's kind of funny, kind of suspenseful, too. Sully. Uh, Peppermint. My wife and I saw for our anniversary. <laughs> Even though our anniversary is in October, but we waited until we saw it at our cheap theater, and it came out. 
I think It Chapter 2 also came out, but I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet. I saw the first It, and it was suspenseful. I saw the one on TV, the miniseries, but the one that came out in 2017, whew, I'm not really a scary person, per person, scary movie person, uh, but I wanted to see it. I remember the miniseries with Tim Curry playing Pennywise. Oh, this guy. Yeah. Oh, Heart racing a minute, so I must see chapter two. But there you have it. Just a few of my favorite movies that came out in September. You can check the list. I'll be part of this playlist here on YouTube. And uh, hey, list below some of your favorite September movies. Maybe I didn't list any ones that you enjoy, but hey, share them with me. I'd like to see what you got. And I'll see you in October, right? <laughs> I think I covered everything, hopefully. I covered all bases, and uh, yeah, check them out. We can't go to the movies. Might as well pull out ones that we love and that are classics, and here are a few that I love and enjoy. I know you will, too. So that is it. And I thank you for listening to me ramble on about movies. It's one of my favorite subjects. Gotta love it. And my dog loves it too. Puts her to sleep. <laughs> but anyway, until next month, see ya. And uh, keep watching the movies, because they're magic. Until then, adios, muchachos.